Hello again folks, in tonight's video I'm going to be tearing down this CCTV tester that I recently purchased from eBay. I got it for just a fiver and the reason it was so cheap is because the screen's cracked on it. Um, this particular model retails currently at around £260 including VAT, so I thought it'd be, you know, at five quid it'd be worth getting and seeing if we can replace the screen on it and if we can it'll be a great little device to have around. So without further ado, let's have a look. So you can see the box is a little bit tatty. Um, on the back it tells us what it does, video signal testing, so you can plug in, of course, a CCTV camera to it. Uh, pan, tilt, zoom, controlling, supports more than 20 kinds of protocols over RS485 uh, and 232. Uh, UTP cable testing, um, what else have we got? Video generating and yeah, RS485 data testing. So it's a, yeah, it is a multi-function as it says, uh, you know, CCV, CCTV tested, it will test all aspects of a CCTV system. So in the box, um, we get the unit itself, of course. We get a 9 volt, I think it's a 2 amp, yeah, 2 amp, uh, God, get your teeth back in, Chris. 2 amp uh, switch mode power supply. Uh, we get the little sort of test dongle for the end of our network cable. Uh, got a small crock clip, or alligator clip to... Um, I forget what type of connectors these are, um, but this basically plugs into the back of the unit and is for testing um, RS-485. Uh, there's a neck strap in there and a random cable. I don't think that actually came with it. It doesn't appear to have come with it. Um, it's a BNC to some sort of modular uh, connector, presumably for using or for testing some other type of CCTV system. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the device itself. We'll get this out of the way. And overall, the condition is quite good. Uh, there's no, you know, massive scratches or anything on it. Yeah, the screen's a bit dirty there. Um, on the side, we've got our RS-232. On the back, we've got our 485 there and the video in and out. And on the other side, we've got our cable test socket, uh, power switch, and 9 volt DC in. Uh, and if I turn it on, I will, sh you know, show you the damage to the screen. It does power on, but as you can see, there's a, a vertical crack down the screen and uh, nothing else has been displayed. Uh, it does beep if we press the buttons, all the buttons work. Um, and we've got some power indication at the top as well. We've got a charge indicator, power indicator, and the transmit and receive for obviously those two serial connections. So I'll just turn it off again. Um, on the back, as you can see here, um, there's a model number, VLCD TM-M. Video format PAL, uh, nine volt DC, as already mentioned, and the good old serial number there. Comes with a little stand, as shown, and then we do have a couple of lithium batteries in here. Um, these are unusual. I don't think I've seen this size before. Um, eighteen four nineties. So, uh, in case you didn't know, the battery numbering code on lithium batteries. The first two digits is the. Um, diameter so it's going to be 18 millimeters so there or thereabouts there we go 18 yeah almost bang on it yeah bang on 18 and uh what was it 490 so that's going to be 49 millimeters across or long i should say so taking care not to short it out yeah 48.66 of course if we were doing the terminals it'll probably be uh probably nearer the 49 is it the and negative term will just sit slightly proud of the, the heat shrink there. But anyway, there we go. There's a little uh, thing if you didn't know. And that goes for, um, in fact, actually, just let me grab some here. Uh, button cells as well. If you ever wonder what, what the coding on these was, uh, is, 2-0 is 20 millimetres across uh, diameter, and uh, the 3-2 is 3.2 millimetres thick. So there you go. Of course, a 3 Three, uh, two zero, uh, two five would be twenty millimeters across, two point five millimeters thick. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Let's uh, crack on inside and see what it's like inside. Now I have checked here; the warranty seal was broken, but it's one of these really thin, uh, plasticky, you know, it's disintegrating type labels. So uh, the the heads of the screws it definitely doesn't look like it's been somebody's been inside it yet. Um, I think that's just basically worn off, you know, through use. So. Hopefully nobody's messed around with it. So take the screws out. 
appears to be just six screws. I feel like I should start singing or humming or something just to pass the time while I'm doing this, but never mind. I'd like to know how to speed up the video. You see people doing videos like this and they speed up people taking screws out. I never know how to do that. I'm rubbish with uh, video editing, as you can probably tell. Um, is there any screws behind that? No. So let's see if it'll open. It's quite tight. Are these stickers? No, no, we're getting, getting there. Okay, right, um, shall we, yeah, we'll take take it fully apart. So I'll take this uh, little zero insertion force connector off, I'll take this uh, flat flex cable off. Now, are these the same size connectors? Yes, they are, so can I get my permanent pen? This is always a good top tip. Uh, if you've got two connectors close by that are the same, type and uh, number of poles, uh, just mark uh, the actual connector itself and the connector on the cable with uh, some pen, permanent pen, and then that will allow you to disconnect them. And then if you need to, uh, when you come to reassemble it, there's going to be no dramas at all. Uh, we'll disconnect the battery connector as well, and then we'll remove this um, PCB. Do this as quickly as possible. Now I'm hoping, looking at the, the LCD just there to the left, I'm hoping that it's going to be a, a sort of generic, uh, generic LCD module that we can just swap out. But yeah, we'll just drag this out here. Okay. And these um, these are actually steel or aluminium. I'm not sure. Yeah, aluminium. Okay, so we've got a, a, a daughter board on top here. Um, that looks like it's going to be for some memory or something like that. Um, I don't think it disconnects. I think it is actually soldered onto the... Oh, no, it's not. There we go. Uh, yeah, we've got a crystal on there. A couple of bits and pieces. And what's that there? NEC, it's a D6464AGT101. So I don't know what one of those is. A couple of little inductors there, uh, some uh, tantalum caps, and yeah, not a lot else. And on here, um, we've got obviously we're connectors, um, another crystal, we've got a microchip pick 18. F six seven M zero. Obviously, I've got a little microcontroller there, doing all the doing all the good stuff, uh, and a few other sort of Julian uh, line packages, some caps, filtering stuff, and yeah, not a lot else really. Yeah, fairly, fairly basic. Not a lot to it. And on to the the bit that's the important bit, the the screen. Let's take this out and see what kind it is, and uh, we'll try and source a replacement. So, upon an initial inspection, um, it looks like we've got this driver board here, and uh, the LCD module is a separate unit that, that plugs into that. So, there's every chance we'll be able to pick one of these up off AliExpress for uh, pennies, provided there's uh, a part number, of course. Okay, and let's see if that will just lift out. Nope. All right, we're getting there. Okay. 
Okay, so there, there's our unit there. So we've got a standard sort of LCD unit mounted in this sort of plastic cradle, and then as I've just shown you, interconnects into this uh, driver board. So I will attempt to separate this. Of course, not too concerned about damage because it's already broken. Ugh. And there we go, there's our part number, so that's good, that's a good start. Uh, TD025THEA3, presumably that's the part number. Um, this could be up here. Um, so what I'll do, I think, is I'll just pause the video, I'll do a quick Google of that part number and see if we can find a suitable replacement. So, if you just bear with me, I'll catch you in a moment. Right, welcome back folks. Right, after very little Googling, I found quite a few websites showing me that particular display. It was that model that I just read out a moment ago. And um, I can actually purchase, uh, purchase one from AliExpress and it's going to cost me about £25, um, which is not, um, is not an amount of money I'm willing to invest in this, uh, you know, given the fact that the display is white, with a cracked LCD, you'd still... Um, you'd still notice, or you should, you would have thought you'd have seen at least some of the image. Um, you've probably seen images of a cracked, um, you know, laptop monitor or whatever. You can still see parts of the image. So I'm not sure if there may be actually an issue with the device itself. Possibly the reason the screen's cracked is somebody's just got frustrated and punched it or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of websites. Oops, a couple of websites have thrown up uh, this particular display and tells you and, and the website tells you what this display is actually used in so as you can see here there's a few olympus uh, digital cameras so we've got the fe150 the fe160 and the x730 and x735 as well as some other sort of unknown brands i'm not sure i've never heard of those brands before um but a quick look on ebay um, shows me that I can, um, there's none on there just now, super cheap, but looking in the sold listings, you know, previous auctions that have sold, um, you can pick up these cameras for around £6. So I think what I'm going to do is keep an eye out for one of these particular models of camera um, and, you know, basically get one, provided the, the display is intact. And, um, you know, we'll take it to bits and uh, transplant the display into it. So hopefully uh, that'll be quite an interesting video. Um, like I say, I could buy one off the shelf. Um, you know, I could probably get it a bit cheaper if I really did my, my research. But of course, we like to do things, cobble things together and uh, do things in the cheap. Well, I do anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. I think, let's like say, hopefully it'll make quite an interesting video. So there we go, guys. Uh, that was a quick teardown. Uh, not a lot to it, as you've seen. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, and hopefully you'll be looking forward to the, the next part. That's uh, provide I can sell this camera. In fact, if you do have an FE150 or 160 that you don't uh, use anymore and you'd be uh, like to donate it to me, or uh, I would be happy to, to purchase it off you at a reasonable price, then do let me know in the comments below. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Um, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on the fat head down here. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. And as always, all the best.